Today we're going to talk about one of the most common fears that people have today. It's a fear that's so common that people are more scared of it than of heights, of animals such as snakes and spiders, and even of needles. Do you know what I'm talking about? So before we dive in, welcome to the Rock and Road to Success. I'm Gabe, and I made my mission to unleash the inner rock stars of at least 1,200,000 people by the end of 2024. So please subscribe and join the band. So the fear I'm talking about is glossophobia. And you might be asking yourself, what the hell is that, right? Because I wouldn't know as well. So glossophobia or the fear of public speaking is said to be the most common fear amongst Americans, according to the National Institute of Mental Health. And the numbers vary from 25 to 75 percent of people being anxious or feeling nervous about speaking in public. But it doesn't have to be that way. And like many of you who are watching, because you're not here, because you're here for a reason, I also have had my bouts of dealing with public speaking and being anxious and not knowing what to say and all of that. So I've worked up myself a lot to be here today talking to you on the internet to any random person that may want to watch. So I know it's hard. I've been there, done that. And today I'll bring to you three of my top tips to speak like a rock star. So the number one that I'm going to talk about is something that your grandpa always tells you, and I hope that you have internalized it, but in the beginning, it's still hard. So number one is all about the eye contact. And eye contact in a person-to-person -person basis, and also when you're talking to an audience. So for instance, you might have noticed that I make a consistent effort to look directly at the camera because then it seems to you that I'm looking directly at you. But can you spot the difference if I start speaking like this? So now I'm speaking looking at myself in, in my screen. So do you spot the difference of how it's more relatable when I'm looking at you like this and speaking looking directly at the camera? whilst you compare it to when I'm looking like this, because now it seems like I'm looking kind of down, kind of looking at your mouth or something like that. So when you're speaking to a camera, you must, as much as possible, even if it's hard in the beginning, try to look directly at the camera, directly at the lens. And the same thing happens when you're talking to someone in person. So you need to focus on this level of their eyes. So I know it's hard sometimes you think, well, wow, should I look at the left eye? Should I look at the right eye? And if you go even deeper, there are some implications of looking into one eye or the other. But as a rule of thumb, just try to look into this area of the third eye. So quite in the middle of their forehead like this, it's, it's an easy way to you just focus. So if you're having a hard time thinking, should I look at one eye? Should I look at the other eye? Just try to look right in the middle here and you'll be good to go. Just don't look too much up here because some people get intimidated when you look in this direction. So around here, around right in the middle, smack dab over here, should be good, good to go. And when you're talking to an audience in public, you can also do another trick that's looking at one person specifically. So you kind of divide the audience in sectors. So maybe you have left, right, and middle, and you might look at one person specifically for a while while you're talking. And then you look at another person over here, and then you look at another person over there. So you have these three, four, or five people that you're consistently looking their way and then their way and then their way so that everyone in the audience feels like you're looking at them. Because of course, if you're on a stage, you're a bit far away from your audience. They can't ex 
exactly know where you're looking at, but they know the general direction of where you're looking at. So you look a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there, and everyone will feel contemplated like if you were actually speaking directly to them. So that's number one. See what I did there? Number two is all about the pauses. So we don't want you to say filler words. We don't want ums, buts. These words make you seem like you don't know what you're talking about. And also, they kind of irritate your audience. So when you're not sure what to say, when you're thinking, because that's normal, when we're speaking, sometimes we need to think about what we're going to say next. And of course, you can't, for God's sake, don't be thinking about what you're going to say next while you're talking, because if you do, you will, you will get confused. You will say the wrong thing. You will get too much in your head. So just don't do that. I know it's hard. It's something that you have to practice as well, but try as hard as possible not to do it. Okay, please, please. Pinky swear that you won't do that. So when you're talking, we also have a tendency when we kind of don't know what to say next to use some filler words like a but, like a um. So you're talking about, let's say, you know, the best tips for public speaking are, see what I did there? So the first one is to look in the eyes of the people um, because... It's important because they feel like you're looking at them and that you're addressing them and their feelings and their thoughts. You know, see what I did there as well. So many times when we're, we kind of don't know the next thing, we're kind of thinking, still processing what the next word or the next phrase will be. We tend to do this to try to give us ourselves, give us ourselves, give ourselves some time to think. But we shouldn't do that. We should try to focus on simply doing this that I just did. Pause. Just pause. So you're speaking and you don't know where to go next. So you give yourself some time. And by doing this, can you feel how it becomes a bit more Dramatic. See what I did there as well? So if instead of saying an um, a bot, you insert a pause. You use that awkward silence in your favor. So food for thought there. Another exercise that I like to use, and I'm pretty much using it as I speak right now because I'm going to rewatch this. So record yourself speaking. This is one of the best bang for your buck exercises that you can do. So record yourself speaking for one minute, then record yourself speaking for two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. Go doing progressive overload like you would do in a gym. And I know it's hard in the beginning because we're not used to listening to ourselves, but watching yourself speaking later on and focusing on different aspects at a time. So first you can focus on the speech itself. So what you're saying, how you're saying the tone, but then as you go on progressively, you might think, okay, now let's think about how is my my body language so my gestures how is my tone do i seem like i know what i'm talking about do i feel nervous do do i mess around with my hands too much like i don't know what i'm talking about do i fidget with my notes am i fidgeting too much am i speaking in a confident way is my posture confident do i have my chest open my, my shoulders are relaxed. So you can 
little by little, you will start noticing all of those little things that add up. So by changing them 1% at a time, eventually you'll become much better, much more confident. But the thing here was about pauses. So back to it, when you have to give yourself some time, you don't need to fill it with sound. You can just pause. And finally, my favorite one, the one that's probably the biggest bang for your buck among the three, but yeah, no, I wouldn't say the biggest bang for your buck because all of them are awesome and all of them will give you a lot of bang for your buck. And if you use all three, you pretty much don't need to use any other tip that I can give you because any rock star, any of those people that we look at and we look up to and we think, wow, that girl is so confident. What a badass. Or, you know, Axel Rose, when he's giving an interview, he seems so chill, so confident. And that's what we want to be. That's what we want to convey to show our most authentic selves, but in a very confident way, because that's who you are. You don't need to apologize for being who you are. Quite the contrary, you should never apologize for being who you are. And one of the things that can give you a lot of confidence, or better yet, that can show people that you're very confident about what you're saying is this one. Employ a descending tone. And I'm going to show you the difference between an ascending tone and a descending tone. So for instance, when you're going to ask for a direction, you might ask something like this. Excuse me, sir. Do you know where King Street is? So do, do you see that inflection? So you're asking a question. Of course, if you're asking a question to a random stranger on the street, you might as well be polite. But if you're giving a speech and you use that kind of tone, you will come around or you will come across as if you don't know what you're talking about or if you're not confident enough to speak it the right way. So when you're talking, can you see the difference of saying King Street is down the road? Or is King Street down the road? I don't even need to use the is. So King Street's down the road, I guess. Or King Street's just as down the road, just around the corner. So can you spot the difference between when I'm saying this with a more ascending tone or a more descending tone? Or for instance, if we go back to the beginning of the video when I was talking about the most feared things by people in the world and that public speaking is one of the things that people fear the most. So if I talked about it in a way like this, public speaking is one of the most, one of the things that people fear the most. And they fear this because they don't like to speak because they feel that they are not confident. Can you, if you listen closely, can you spot like the person is kind of saying they're not confident, right? Whilst if you speak like this, public speaking is one of the greatest fears of Americans, over 25% of them say that that's the greatest fear that they have. If you think you should speak better, join the rock and road to success. So do you see the difference? And I'm talking completely randomly. I hadn't even thought about these examples before I started. So I might not come across as confident as I want to. But can you feel the difference between going ascending or descending? It's a hell of a difference. So imagine if a police officer had to bark an order to someone, do you think they would say, 
hey, could you please not do that? Or do you think they would say, stop? Yeah, of course they would be like, stop right there. So the descending tone shows confidence. It shows that you know what you're talking about. And if you're going to speak publicly, if you have to give a speech, if you have to speak up at a meeting at work, you absolutely must convey your confidence. So you, by using these three tips that I talked about, by using eye contact, so you look in the eyes, you look directly at the people, you don't look over here at their chin or, you know, you, you're looking... Um, you know, I'm not sure what I'm talking about. So I can't look in the eyes because I'm not confident enough. No, you are confident. You are worthy. So you look dead, dead pan into their eyes like this. Look, and don't be afraid of intimidating people. Don't be afraid of, oh, I'm going to look invasive. You're not. If you're thinking about this, you're not going to look invasive at all. You'll just look normal because you'll just be normal. You won't even look super confident at the beginning. You'll just look normal. So rest assured, you don't have to be afraid of looking overconfident if you're a person that is not that confident with public speaking. Just go overboard. Just think if it was the highest version, the most rock star version, the most baddest version of myself, how would they speak? How would they feel to other people? And, emulate that also the pauses when you don't know what to say next or when you're kind of thinking when you're giving yourself some time just pause let the silence do the work and especially in negotiations when there's that awkward silence and awkward silence is a phrase that i hate because silence can be such a powerful tool in your repertoire, especially in a negotiation. The person that feels the need to speak, to fill that silence, usually loses. So if you can calmly wait for them to speak, you will get much better results when negotiating. And finally, the descending tone. Using the descending tone will make you seem like you know what you're talking about. And I hope you know what you're talking about. Because usually you are, especially if you need to watch a video like this. If you're watching until the end, then it's because it's something that's dear to you and that you know that you must become better at. So just practicing the descending tone whenever you're going to talk to someone. And don't be afraid of sounding a bit bossy. Don't be afraid of sounding a bit demanding. Don't worry about that. Now it's not the time to worry about that kind of thing. That, now it's the time to worry about how to improve your confidence and improve your, conf your public speaking. So thank you for watching. If you want to know more tips about how to unleash your inner rock star, please subscribe to the Rock and Roll to Success channel. I also have a newsletter and a podcast. The podcast, we have the episodes here on YouTube as well. Thank you very much for watching. Join the band. I believe in you. I believe that you will become a great public speaker by the end of the year, as will the other 1,199,999 rock stars that will join us by the end of the year so thank you for watching please share with your friends that need to hear this and let's practice our public speaking skills to become the rock stars of the world okay see ya